Well, we are talking to the Lyric this morning about celebrating its 130th anniversary. And Jonathan Schwartz, the Lyric Foundation Executive Director, is joining us this morning to talk all about it. Good morning. Good morning. How are you both? Oh, we're doing well. Yes, 130 years. That's a big anniversary. It absolutely is. So the Lyric has been in continuous operation since October 31st, 1894, when the Boston Pops performed. Oh. And we have put on amazing performances throughout the years, whether it was back in the 1890s and the 1900s when it was more classical, um, when we had Baltimore Symphony Orchestra there or opera there, through having Pink Floyd's only Baltimore ever performance, Aretha Franklin's perform there, right through now when we do so much comedy and, and rock and R&B. My gosh. Um, so that's, the history goes back such a long way. How has the venue changed? The venue has changed when it was opened in 1894. It was a much smaller footprint. We've added a much bigger lobby for our patrons to have a great experience, a bigger backstage rehearsal space. So the venue has really grown and evolved to fit with the times and the needs of a modern audience. Got you. And for those not familiar with the Lyric Foundation, what exactly does the organization do? Yeah, so I always tell people the Lyric Foundation does three things. We put on world-class entertainment in a world-class space. We maintain the historic building that's 130 years old, and we have a great arts education program. We work with youth in Baltimore City and Baltimore County. We, have, we give them voice and agency. We don't have them repeat the lines of others. We ask them to write and do their own work. And we also do a Dream Big Essay contest every year that's very popular. Okay. So what uh, are some of the shows you're excited about coming this season? We have so much coming up. So we have, from a comedy point of view, we have Matt Matthews, we have Ronnie Chang, we have Baltimore's own Stavros will be there okay. right after Thanksgiving. We have Chicago and Alan Parsons coming if you like classic rock. We have Anthony Hamilton coming also for kids. We have um, Sesame Street Live and Charlie Brown Christmas. So there's something for everyone of all ages. Yeah, such a wide <laughs> array. And what else do you have going on to celebrate the anniversary, 130 so, years? So we're doing a lot of social media promotion around that. You'll be seeing things in the building and throughout the whole year because we're not looking at it as one day. We're looking at it as a year mm, of celebration. Okay. So stay tuned to LyricBaltimore.com and look for all the great things coming regarding the 130th. And always pay attention to our schedule that's ever-changing and ever-growing. Well, are you fascinated to see the range of entertainment that comes through and the response? It seems, I mean, I hear Charlie Brown and then I hear, you know, um, Chicago. I mean, yeah. that's uh, quite a bit. It is a quite a range. We'd have something, if, whether you're 2 or 82, we have something <laughs> for you. And it's really exciting to see all the different performances, people of all ages. There's something for everyone in the Baltimore area to come and see at the Lyric. And is it just coincidence that they found, you found it on, on Halloween, or is, is there some lore the, to that? There is no lore to that. It just oh, okay. happened to be the day, I guess, when the building was done and the first performance <laughs> was there. Perfect. That's not haunted. We don't see a Phantom of the Opera or anything uh, like in the there, rafters. I've heard a couple either. people talk about a couple of ghosts, but I, I, <laughs> I've not had the privilege of seeing them. <laughs> Got it. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Jonathan. We really appreciate it. And congrats on this milestone. Well, thank you so much, and thanks for having me. And the website, one more time. LyricBaltimore.com. LyricBaltimore.com. All right.